Hi, Hayley. Um, yeah, I know you said it would be a few days before you'd know anything because you'd need to look at the images you took, but yeah, just when you know, please call. Uh, sorry again about the whole of everything. Yeah, bye. Hi, Hayley. Me again. Um, I know I just called you literally 20 minutes ago and you said you were on shift, but it's been like a week now. Um, I know you're really busy, but I am I am so fucking anxious about this. Uh, we should meet up for drinks. I can still get drunk, but basically it's a vodka like it's water situation. It requires a lot. Uh, maybe that's something which you'll be able to explain with the blood tests. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Call me when you can. Hey, Hayley. Uh, it was so good to FaceTime on Tuesday, but we didn't really get to chat for long, and you said you'd needed to hear back from your friend about something from the... Yeah, I get it. Sorry. I, I know I'm... I just... It's... Him, you know, Casper. So, yeah, if you'd call... Uh, and if you see Nash when you go out tomorrow night, say hi. Actually, don't say hi. Uh, just tell me. No, don't. <sighs> yeah, I know you said you'd text me to arrange to talk in person. Honestly, I don't think that I'd... Uh, I can't really um, right now. Uh, just don't, uh, yeah, so if, if you could, if you could call me and tell me like that, that'd be, yeah, I know you, I know you wanted to speak to me in person, but I just, I can't right now, uh, it's been two weeks, I am losing my mind, I, <sighs> have you, have you spoken to Nash at all? I just, yeah, I, yeah, when you have a chance, please call. Hi, know you're busy. Uh, what what's what's happening, Haley? Um, why aren't you? Let's arrange to meet. No, no, that's not. I, no, don't come over. I, fuck. Sorry, do not come over. <sighs> Sorry, missed your call. Was uh, sleeping. Yeah, it's just, I know it's, yeah. Oh, tell me about Cass. Tell me I can fix Cass. Hey, uh, sorry, soup brain. Call. Um, miss call again. Sorry, didn't mean to worry you. Please don't yell. Do not come over. Please. Okay, right, okay. I know this is, it's mad, but I'm, I need you to, see, look, he's, Casper's arm is, oh, I sound mad. <laughs> I'm going mad, aren't I? <laughs> oh, fuck, what the fuck was that? What the fuck is, ah! This is Not Quite Dead, episode 34, Sound and Fury. Alfie. Salut. Alfie. Oh. Alfie. <gasps> oh shit. You're right. Alfie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking my arm. Ah. Oh, the neck. The neck is fine too. Ah. Careful. Careful, little love. Alfie. Enough. Merci. Oh. Fuck. Fuck. So sorry. Not at all. How do you feel? Bite. Better than unconscious? No. Bite. What do you have left in storage? <laughs> um, 
couple of pints of Tim when you're a couple. I've I'm not getting out. Right, look at me. Oh, don't. When was the last time you went to it? I um, don't know. Before Cascan. Oh, Alfie. That was almost a month ago. What is wrong with you? You you had barely eaten when I... You know what? Fine. No, no. Put back. You need all of it. But for Cass. No, I am not arguing. How do you make it liquid? Ow. Oh. Leave out. Warm, slow. Are you going to jump me again if we wait? If I move or think. Dakar, we need another solution then. Yeah, just Cass. He doesn't look touched. A little dusty, but then aren't. Besides, you know, the obvious. No, blood, Cass. <sighs> Alfie, no, you need this more than Cass. Alfie, be serious. We will get more blood for him. But right now you need it more, okay? Promise. I do. Now, I'm freezing the blood. How do I do this? Um, microwave 30. Chaos. I'm certain you said words to me in English, but I have no idea what they could possibly mean in that context. Uh, uh, I'll just... Ah! I think your uncle is broken. You have really not been eating. Idiot boy. Hey, don't just put down, now! Reality suggests otherwise. Not potatoes. Oui, they are much lighter, come on. Okay? Yeah, just no talk. Okay, understood. Counter, please. Of course. No, no, no. Stay back. Hurts. Hurt now. No. You won't hurt me. Try. Shh. You are going to fall if I don't hold you. You don't have the energy to sit. What have you done to yourself? Sorry. Enough, enough. I'm tired. I know, I know. Me too, little man. Good. Very good. Can you sit without me holding you up? Très bien. Ugh, I despise those things. What? Microwaves? Food should not take this short a time to cook. You hardly have to use them. Why does it bother you? Mm. Let me look at your head. Ah, that still hurts. The wound has closed, but it is not healed fully. You were barely hunting before, but you just stop entirely. So reckless. You could have starved yourself. I'm fine. You are covered in blood and brick dust. You are not fine. Let me... May I? Sure. Lick my forehead. Be my guest. Merci. A little better. How does it feel? Not so stingy. Thanks. Mm. You have not finished what I gave you. It's still a bit frozen. It tastes weird. Ah. May I? Be my guest? Hmm. I... Mm. What? What he has been dosed with. It is a... Uh, melange? May... Oh! Melange! Mixture! Fuck! A mixture! The synthetic blended... Oh, whatever the fuck they give to those rats, maybe? I thought it tasted weird. Like, some kind of whisper of vampireness, but I couldn't place it. And I thought, like, surely at how dilute it would be. You're looking at me funny. The French is getting better. Oh. Yeah. I noticed before, too. You have been practicing. And I saw the book at your bedside. Was hoping you'd miss that. Also hoping I would miss the fact that you have been sleeping in there with him, I presume? Yes. What were you saying about recognising the taste? That you are right. 
You know how humans can find faces in everything? We are programmed to find the taste and smell of others of our kind. Huh. Interesting. Have you eaten enough? <laughs> Probably not. Finish what's there, I will take you out. But- You need to eat or you're no use to anyone. You can barely string a sentence together. This state you're in. I knew you were in blood debt, but I did not know it was this bad. You told me not to sit by the river. Oui, that has nothing to do with hunting. I don't know why you are mentioning it. You said we were being watched. We are. You still need to eat. Why are they watching us? They want us dead. What else? Why did you come here? You were hurt. Yeah, but... You left. You told me to go, so I went. I know. But now you're back. I have thought on this a lot, Alfie. And I do not think there is a deeper explanation. I just want to help. Does it matter what the reason is? Yes. I will leave again as soon as you are not going to curl up and die on me. Why? Do you want me to stay? No. Then that is why. Why do you want to stop me from just curling up and dying? What's it to you if that happens? What is it to... No. I will not get drawn into this... Yeah. Drink. What? Have you spoken to Haley? Your doctor friend? No. She texted me. She went to look for you in colloquium, said you weren't there. Shortly after our trip to the hospital, I ended in my resignation. Why were you even working in a bar at all? It's a good way to get information and to make an impression. Ha! Huh. I knew it was bullshit when you said you were trying to be inconspicuous. Not bullshit exactly. I do not want to draw attention to myself. There are rumours I'm nearby because of Casper disappearing. It's making the locals unsettled. More and more of them are going missing. And it's not just new vampires anymore. People are afraid. And rightly so. They feel watched. They are watched. Have you spoken to Ross and Eponine? They told me a rather troubling thing. What? You went to them begging for help to retrieve Casper when you were still human. I... I didn't know where else to go. You know Ross, don't you? A little. Why is it troubling that I went to them? What did they do? You know they have an halfway house of sorts. That young vampires seek refuge with them? Yeah. Word travels out of that house, and it travels fast. Casper must have told you about his reputation. Yeah, he said he was here because Roz and Eponine asked him to come. Did he now? Well, maybe not in so many words, but he strongly implied it. So there is a general sense of panic. Of course there is. People are going missing. No, mon ami. Not just people. Casper Novotny, vampire avenger, who slayed his maker, has been disappeared. So they're more scared now? Yes. And that's my fault for speaking to them. They doubtless would have found out anyway, but it was not wise of you to go to them. Why? Well, besides the real risk they could have killed you? Because this is a complicated matter. There is politics involved. Surely Casper told you things are complicated? Kind of. He hinted at it. A bit. Well, so far your sample size for vampires is small, and Casper and I are both outliers in our own ways. Casper was never one for his and graces. He would have done terribly and caught. Rose? Eponine too? So she is younger, so it is less pronounced, I think. They are both vampires who were part of society before they died. Society? What do you mean? Don't we all live in a society? High society, Elfie. Socialites. Ah. Rich people. Yes, indeed. What's that got to do with anything? Well, Rose in particular. She was one of Claudio's, uh... How should I call them? Spies? Cuckoos? Many of them were chosen by him strategically so they could apply political pressure on their relevant governments. He had an habit of choosing young women who he believed would do well as debutants, or else were very marriageable. Noble lords, to turn them could be risky. They had so much power of their own. But the ladies, their wives, they offered knowledge, insight, influence, and most importantly, there was generally a ceiling upon how powerful they could become individually. So what? So, is Claudio gone? Modern technology moving on, the age of the absolute monarch and old eye society shifting, these vampires, where did they go? Well... Roz ran a brothel for a bit, I think. Is there judgment in your turn for that? If there is, I do not take kindly to it. No, no judgment. Just saying. Showing off the one piece of information you know. She closed it because of you, right? Oui. What do you want to talk about, hmm? Do you want to talk about me and Roz? Or do you want to talk about why things are so complicated amongst vampires of a certain age and disposition? First one, I get why it's complicated. They're privileged fucks who started their vampire lives thinking that they would be little princesses of the new vampire king, but then you killed their daddy. So they make it everyone else's problem by making it as difficult as possible to get anything done. 
just like rich old humans. It's not that deep. Hmm. You have grasped the basics of it, yes. But I killed their daddy, as you call him. And it is no secret that I have a fondness for Casper. Oh. So they were expecting you to kill them, like you did all of Claudio's other little followers. I killed Claudio's fanatics, mon chaleur. I did not kill every vampire we made, or even everyone who was loyal to him. If they were willing to give up their political power and live a quiet life, I let them. And they just do as you say, do they? These vampires? Yes, unequivocally. Because you killed Claudio. Because I killed Claudio. Because some of them think I am the source of all vampirism. Because some of them are afraid that I will kill them. Because they have seen the penalty for those who cross me. Right. Am I supposed to be frightened of you now? It would make things perhaps more convenient if that were so. That's why you were at the bar, then. That's the impression you were making. If the oldest vampire can shut up and be a bartender, everyone else needs to pipe down and toe the line? Exactly, Mom. Are they doing that? For the most part. But they are afraid, which makes them more dangerous and puts them at greater risk. Why? Because fear makes people vulnerable, no? I think this is why so many more are being taken. Everyone is scared. They're making foolish decisions because of it. I have wondered if this is a deliberate thing on Bonhams and his team's part, no? Are they causing this descent on purpose? And the more that disappear, the more frightened they get. Oui, it is a vicious cycle. But you know all about that, no? Such a cycle of fear is how we manage to fall through holes in our back rooms and not eat for four weeks solid and almost kill ourselves. Sorry. It is okay. I'm glad you are not more seriously hurt. You would not have needed my help to heal at all if you had been eating. When was the last time you even left the house? You know the answer to that. Yes. But I was hoping I was somehow mistaken. You cannot go weeks without eating, Elfie. It will drive you mad. And then it will kill you. Do you want that? No. So why? Hayley said she'd call. She wanted some time, she told me. You said me. you'd not seen her. Has she said something to you? I keep asking and she says she needs to speak to her friend first because... Nej, she won't show me any of the scans of Casper. It's been weeks. I have not seen her. I only know what she told me at the hospital. What would she have said to me? I don't know. Something. Anything that... To indicate... She told me she had no idea what she was looking at. That is all she said to me. And then she asked if she might image me as well. Did she? Oui. You were okay with that? Why was I not to be? Because it... Oh, never mind. You want to know what is wrong with Casper? No. Yeah. The scans will not help if she does not have an LT vampire to compare them to. Oh, that's... That's actually smart. Merci. Though, healthy vampire feels like a bit of an oxymoron. <gasps> what are you doing? You're still not properly healed. You need to eat. Oh, no. Eat. Immediately. <sighs> Fine. Fine. You do make a good point about comparisons between you and Cass, though. If you say so. Oh, spit it out. Spit out what? The argument you want to have with me about comparisons, even though it was literally your suggestion. Not an argument. Not about comparisons. But if you eat, I will talk. Great. You seem to think that we are suffering from a condition. We? Oui? Yeah, we are. Eat. You prompted me. My mistake. Finish the blood. I do not know. Something about this. I... Only... He didn't... Only... He... Don't stop eating! Mm -hmm. We are not sick. We are not humans with our condition. That is why Henri's cure killed us. Henri was the one who came up with the cure. Alfie. If you can suck a drop more of blood out of that, I'll... Well, I don't have a hat, and neither do you. What do you need an hat for? Nothing. I'm finished. We don't have any more blood. I'm still hungry, I know. Don't bitch at me. The cure. You told me there was a cure before. You just dropped it. No explanation. I've been... Henri, you killed him. You had notebooks and... Calm, Alfie. Calm, Alfie. You're panicking. Shit. I am, I am. Come here, come here. No, I don't. I need a bit of space. Okay. Fucking talk to me. Tell me about Henri. Uh, he was French. No shit, his name is Henri. Désolé, fuck. Uh, Paris, Guimorse uh, That is not what he called it, but that is what it was. You killed Henri in 1902. Chemo wasn't invented until the 40s. Not in a practical sense, no. And drugs like the ones Henri was synthesizing to treat vampirism were not used to treat humans until much more recently than that. Hang on. I thought you didn't know anything about medicine. Why? You asked me to explain stuff. 
I have an interest in some things. I never got a medical degree, but I have an interest from time to time. It is interesting. I just don't understand much about it. You're fucking insane. Quite probably. Henri, what did he say? It's not what he said, it's what his work concluded. You are not infected with vampirism, it is you, one and the same. But... Hmm? I'm just trying to... I don't... I'm going to try and walk on my foot. Okay. Help. Of course. No, I meant to walk, you don't have to... Oh. Please. Oh. Let me out. Oh, oh Nesh. I prefer it still, don't you? So what if I do? Fascinating little thing you are. Still think I'm broken then? I never thought that you were broken. As I have made extremely clear multiple times. Was that enough? Are you healed? I think so. Good. Where are you going to? There's this paper I was reading. Part of Bonham's notes. It would be remiss of me not to ask. About what? The chimney. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Don't know what happened, really. It just collapsed on me. Ow. I don't know, it just fell. How unusual. I did not realise there were structural problems. You'd have thought that gas will- Aha! Here! Yeah! Uh, you see here, it's talking about something right there. But malignant, transmissible, and then on the next page it just says, Helix. That doesn't make any sense. And I'm not stupid, but I can't figure it out. There are pages missing. What? Here. Yeah. Where it is talking about fibrous tissues, there are pages missing. Oh my god, you're right. Fuck! And... And at the bottom of the page here, the last sentence... This seems to be determined by the presence of the proteins in the tissue, given the way that the white blood cells... Shit. HLAs. What? Um... So, human blood comes in a few different types. Something I'm actually wondering about is how we can just seemingly eat humans with all different blood types, which is fascinating. And, like, I was wondering if maybe blood type had an impact on how likely someone will be to survive the change, but no. I should have thought. You have still failed to explain HLAs. Right. Sorry, sorry. Um, so... When humans need blood transfusions, when they need donor blood, we look at blood type to make sure that the blood that we introduce into the system isn't going to make them have an autoimmune response. So, like, otherwise their body's going to react like it's a foreign substance, because it is. But when we're looking for matches to transplant organs, not blood, we look at HLAs, which is interesting, because the way we check for HLAs is by looking at white blood cells. White blood cells don't have any of the antigens we use to determine blood type, but they're the best cells to look at when we're working out tissue compatibility because they do show the HLAs. So what do these things do? Um, basically, it's a part of the DNA which determines tissue building and how your immune system works. They're in charge of proteins on the surface of cells. They're... yeah. This... this is what's missing. There are pages here where that must be what they were talking about, but they've taken them away. What does this mean? It means that... <sighs> okay, so I've been thinking that it's weird that there's nothing about the change itself here. Nothing documenting that process. We've got things about what happens when vampires die. We've got killing methods. We've got all sorts. But the actual mechanics of the change itself? Nothing. And it's weird, and it's been bugging me. But I guess what I was assuming was that this was just knowledge that Bonham had in his head, and he didn't need to write it down. But I think... I think maybe these documents have been more deliberately edited than I thought. But they tried to burn down the lab to destroy them. Why edit them? Did they actually try to burn it down, though? These are experienced scientists. They're smart. They knew they had fire suppression, that starting a fire right next to the document storage area which had gas fire suppression in place would mean that the flames would get smothered almost immediately. They must have known that. But they sealed their victims behind a fireproof door so they would be unaffected. No, I think... I think it's theatre. I think they left the subjects there to horrify us, but also to distract us. I think they wanted us to take the paperwork. They wanted us to see it, but they wanted us to think that they didn't leave it on purpose. They've taken some of it out, so they didn't want us to see all of it. They're directing us to something. Or away from something. Why? Mert. 
Ma, Henri. When we captured Tim Sherman, he was talking about Henri. He even specifically asked about his notebooks. Shit. What? Ugh. Henri knew I was coming the day I killed him. He was ready when I found him, ready to die. He even had some idea that it would be a painful death. He relished it. And he has prepared a series of notes to outlast him, separate from his records of his experiments. These notebooks read as a kind of treatise on his beliefs, on why he was doing this work. But he also codified his methods, breaking them down into easily identifiable chunks. You read them? Nash. What the fuck is that expression, Nash? What was in those notebooks? Could Barnum have them? It is extraordinarily unlikely. I hid them very well. So they're not destroyed? I never claimed they were. Well, no, not explicitly, but... Oh, never mind. Why didn't you get rid of them entirely? Casper... Casper was there when you killed Henri. He went to Bonham. Nej, what if I he... I know, I know. Tim was trying to... He was trying to get you to talk about Henri, he was. The way he said it made it sound like he was certain we'd have talked about it before. But you had never mentioned Henri to me before that day. Just... This is complicated. Explain it, then. Of course Casper was interested in Henri. Of course he was. He was young. He had not lived through what had happened with Claudio. He didn't understand that... Claudio? Henri was one of the last made before I killed Claudio, and brought an end to his conquests. Claudio made Henri? No. Claudio had by that time set up a system of packs of vampires all over Europe. It was... He was made by one of Claudio's captains, the one who lived in Normandy. Just like Cass was made by Antoinette. Wait, Henri wasn't made by Antoinette, too. No. But... I'm sensing there's a but here. The group which made Henri, there was a deep fanaticism amongst them. A desperation. They knew, I think, that Claudio was not going to be successful in his endeavours, but they believed in his bullshit about the blood, the purity, and me. By that point, I had done a significant degree of... uh, convincing. Murder, you mean? In some instances, yes. But more important was the literal convincing of Claudio's captains that his cause was not just lost, but ill-founded. The more it turned against him, the easier he would be to topple. At his height, he had constructed near-religious significance about himself. If anyone challenged him, they would be killed by his loyalists, so it was important to destroy the fanatics first. And you missed that Henri was a fanatic? Could Bonham be one of Claudio's? I don't know. I don't recognise the smell of him. Always it has been filtered through other things. A trace on Casper's clothes, a lingering centuries-old smell in that basement. I do not know this vampire at all. I've never seen him in the flesh. Antoinette. She was doing a version of what Claudio set out to do, wasn't she? When she made Cass? Casper talked about Bonham like he was trying to make a cure, but you say that's what Henri was doing, and he was trying to follow in Claudio's footsteps at the same time. Those things feel like a contradiction, but they don't have to be. They weren't for Henri. I don't think that we can expect Henri's conscience to be consistent. Hang on. Didn't you say that you thought Henri was a friend before you killed him? I did. I was good friends with his maker. She was key in helping me resolve the, uh, situation. And Casper, how did he come into this? As I say, it makes sense that Casper was interested in Henri's work. Different although his focus was from Casper's. Henri was obsessed with the mechanisms that Gustav made specifically, and whilst they were important for Casper's own studies, they were merely a tool for trying to understand what the rest of us are. To Casper, in a way, the half made is the most pure form of the vampire. We are the halfway point in his view of things. The Henri's research pointed to them being insufficient in several ways which challenged Casper's views on this. They... they study together? Work together? Not to my knowledge, I don't think so. But they spoke at length, mostly in letters, I believe. It is hard to be sure. Things had already become... strained between Cass and I, which I won't... What is important is that he came to me in Paris. I remember how strange that thing seemed. Right from the beginning, his own manner was just... off. He had always been strange, always wore the weight of the world on his shoulders, but this... it was different. He seemed... I am tempted to say resolved, though I am not sure that is the right word. He... he was... He... he was... Anesh, are you... No, no, I am fine, I am fine. I'm sorry, I didn't think that... What? You thought this would be something that was easy to discuss, so that I could enact violence upon one I had once called a friend in so trivial a way that I could speak freely about it with no difficulty at all? I don't know. I'm sorry. I am fucking... I am thousands of years old. This does not mean that I am... I am not impenetrable. I know. I'm sorry. 
do have pretty compelling evidence you're not impenetrable. Is this funny? Mm, clearly not. It was late when Casper came to me in Paris. I wasn't expecting him, but of course I smelled him as soon as he walked down the streets. I thought I was imagining it. It had been months, weeks. We thought, you see, last time we had spoken, about the nature of his studies, the way they had driven him, about what he had told me about this friend he had reconnected with on his travels. Stupid boy, listening to stories shared by vampires too young to know what they are talking about. Old stories. I have wondered at times what exactly little Abraham Stoker knew of our kind. There was little fact in his novel, of course, but the stories, they matched up with some things about me. Things which made Casper... <sighs> they made him what? I want to make it clear I was never worried he would become like Antoinette. For one thing, he hated himself too much to think of his lineage as anything special, and was distasteful enough of the rest of us, so strongly believing that we were just marionettes puppeted by some infection, that I believed he was not at risk of developing that same superiority complex that had consumed his maker. But I did fear what he would find in those Romanian hills. Why? Like many old vampire stories, I'll see that one is tied to my past. Another death on my hands. A vampire to whom I owed my life, in fact. And then... And then... When Cass was in Romania, he found that village with the barn full of dead people and the vampire in the coal shed. Thankfully, not somebody I knew. It would have got a lot more complicated otherwise. That's... We're... <sighs> I want to know about all of this. I, what does it have to do with Henri? Why does this matter? Because of Claudio. What? I'm lost. I am attempting to... It is very difficult to explain this. Everything loops around, you see? It is complicated. So, what? Claudio wanted to make vampires... I... I do not... I do not think I can do this. What, what do you mean? I'm trying to tell you these things. I'm sorry, but I... I... I can't. It, it feels like it is caught here stuck on my ribs somehow, locked in place. It, it, it hurts when I... Nash, what did Claudio do to you? Our teeth, as you are so cleverly deduced, leave open wounds when we don't tongue them shut. Our teeth interfere with our healing process, something to do with the compounds, I think. I do not know... Compounds? What are you... Of the... Not now, Elsie. Fucking, sorry, shit. The bites on my chest. That was how he bled me. We fought at first, you see, and he caught my throat. He bit, he drank, he... And when I was too weak to fight, he tied me down. And he bit me again, over and over. He wouldn't let the wounds close. And so the blood, it, it pulled and ran, and he siphoned it away, and kept it to... to turn them. Fuck. That's... Fuck. It was not... There was... ceremony to it. I... It is in my head now, still. Sometimes the... the words, the screams of the humans, the... the sound of the blood, the bites of the chains in my... and through me. Metal on bone, trying to heal around it. A constant drip of human blood into my face. From a jaggy out the loft, whenever it was not staring into me, I... Stop, Nash. Stop. I made Claudio. I made him. With my own teeth and blood. I had tasted his blood, too. I had kissed him. I had fucked him. Let him fuck me. I had... He... Shh. Shh. No, Alfie. No, I am sorry. You want to... Jesus. To know, and you are right. Jesus. This isn't what I meant when I... I'm sorry. Then what? If not this, then what do you want to know? You and Cass. Cass and Bonham, how it all connects. This, I... this is how it connects. My stupid blood, Alfie. Nej, your blood isn't stupid. No, it's... It's all I... Come. We should end, I think. It will all be much easier if we end. Okay. No.
Not Quite Dead is written, performed, and edited by Aira Major under a Creative Commons 4.0 attribution license. You can support the show and get early access to new episodes by going to patreon.com forward slash hanging Studios. Live. Laugh. Bite.